average speed checks are becoming more and more common on our roads. And if you're lucky enough to live outside the handful of countries that use them, I'll bring you up to speed. Unlike a traditional speed camera, average speed cameras always work in pairs and they cover motorways, city centers and country roads, making sure that you don't speed. As you're driving along, you'll pass by camera A, which will take a photo of your license plate, your car and the time to the nearest millisecond. And then further down the road, maybe a half mile to a mile or so, there will be camera B, which will do exactly the same thing. Then by doing some basic GCSE level math, by taking the time it took you to travel between the two cameras and dividing it by the distance, your average speed can be calculated. Hence the name, the average speed check. Now, while they're great at making sure everyone drives at the speed limits, I personally hate the added stress that they bring to driving. And I actively try to avoid roads that have average speed cameras on them, not because I speed, but because it turns driving into a foot balancing act. And sure, if you had cruise control, it would be a lot easier, but me with my little Suzuki Swift, I don't have that luxury. But putting that all aside, perhaps the most infuriating thing about an average speed check zone is that there, there always seems to be someone overtaking you above the speed limit. Which honestly got me wondering, is there something that I'm not in on? And how accurate are average speed cameras? And just before we start, I am not condoning speeding in an average speed check zone. This is for educational entertainment purposes only. The myths. While researching this topic, there were two points that came up again and again. The first one being that if you change lanes, you can trick the average speed cameras, which is one of the dumbest things I've ever heard. The fact that the government can track all our phones to see our locations, you think an average speed camera can't see that you've shifted lane? Are you crazy? And secondly, that they're not on at night. Average speed cameras are fitted with infrared lights so they can see your number plate. So no, you're not gonna get away with speeding at night. With that now of the way, let's focus on the real question, speed. And those who do in an average speed check either fall into one of two categories. Group one, the super speeders. The first of those are those who speed well over like 60 and a 50. And as I've personally noticed, they're almost exclusively driving company vans, Range Rover Evokes, or a car that looks like it's about to fall apart with no MOT and no insurance. And to be honest, all these people just don't care about the fines. Either the car isn't in their name, or they'll just pay someone else to take the blame, claiming that they weren't driving at the time. Which sure is super illegal, but people do it. And even recently, the Member of Parliament for Peterborough was caught doing it, where she paid off her lodger to take the blame, but then getting caught because his passport records show that he wasn't in the country at the time that she went through the speed camera. Like, what? Group two, the law abiders. The other group of people are those who speed very minimally, about three to four miles an hour above the speed limit. And it seems to be that they can get away with it due to three main factors. Factor one, lying speedos. The first is that every speedo in every car is under recording your GPS speed, which is the one that the speed cameras read. You see, speedos in cars base your speed off the wheel rotation. Hence, if you've ever wheel spun or ice or mud, you would have seen your speedo go way up over 100. But yet, you're not going anywhere. Car manufacturers, by law, can't under-report your speed, so instead they over-report it. And the law states, to be on the safe side, that it can be 10% plus 6.25 miles an hour. So effectively, your car could be reading on the speedo that you're traveling at 50 and a quarter miles an hour, but in reality, you're only traveling at 40. Now, that is on the extreme end, but research by Auto Express found that most cars are under-reporting by one to two miles an hour compared to their actual speed. A minor difference, I know, but enough for you to go a little bit faster in an average speed check. Factor two, bendy roads. The second is that average speed checks are rarely conducted on straight roads. Every road, whenever you like it or not, is gonna have a slight curve or bend to it. So for the cameras to be as accurate as possible, they have to assume that every car has traveled the shortest distance possible between the two cameras. So what does this mean? Well, similarly to why runners are stacked on a racing track is when they get to the corner, the inside runner will be traveling a shorter distance than those on the outside. Hence, in an average speed check zone, increasing the average speed. Now, this is going to be very lenient on where the cameras are located, but it's certainly going to make a very small difference, maybe a few miles an hour, to your actual recorded speed when you go through an average speed check. And factor three, the 10% plus two rule. Thirdly and finally, it's the infamous rule of 10% plus two. It's widely reported that speed cameras don't clock you if you observe the 10% plus two mile an hour rule above the speed limits. 
However, I'm going to be honest, this is incredibly wishy-washy and there is absolutely no proof that this is real or true. So for this, I'm just going to leave it out of the equation and focus on the other two factors as being a little bit more realistic. So, in conclusion, if I'm traveling in an average speed check zone, I can likely go one to two miles an hour above the speed limit, accounting for an incorrect reading in my speedo and curvature of the road. But anything higher is going to be risking it. And just to be clear, I'm not condoning speeding, and there is absolutely no excuse for speeding in a construction zone. So, with this whole video, take it with a pinch of salt, and hopefully it's answered those questions about how people always seem to be overtaking you in an average speed check. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you next time.